We're going to talk a little bit today on tides. We looked at a uh, lab last week where you looked at the gravitational influence of the Earth, Moon, and Sun on the, uh, the rise and fall of ocean waters. The rise and fall of ocean waters is quite dramatic in certain parts of the world. Uh, we don't see it much, you know, in Lake Michigan, it's not a large enough body of water. But when you start getting ocean areas, uh, you can see the picture on the left would be a high tide and all the, the boats are afloat. And the picture on the right would be low tide and the water, you know, actually goes away and you can actually walk on that, uh, that area there. Well, as we looked at last week, it's definitely the gravitational pull between these three celestial objects. In spring tides, those are the highest of the highs and the lowest of the lows, you have this linear alignment. And the moon can either be in a new moon or a full moon position. Now, the moon influences more gravitational pull on the Earth as far as tides go because it is closer. And as we know about gravitational pull, it is distance and the mass of the object. Here, the sun does influence some, but it's farther away, so its influence is not as great. On neap tides, you have this little bit more of a right angle or an L shape, where you have the sun, the earth, and then the moon, either third quarter or first quarter, forms a right angle with the earth at its uh, vertex here. There are three basic tidal types which you're going you're gonna to need to know. And let's look at the bottom one first, which is diurnal. And what you have here is a tidal day, and you have one high and one low during diurnal. Uh, another one, the one in the middle here, is called the mixed tide. Uh, you just got different, you know, high can be a couple highs in the day, a couple lows in the day, and none of them are the same. And as you can see from here, if you have your tidal day, especially on this one, You've got a couple lows, but they're, they're really different. You're looking at the amplitude again, and you've got a couple highs, and those are at different uh, different amplitudes also. Uh, another one is semi-diurnal. So if you look at the tidal period, you end, up, you end up having, here's a tidal day here, you end up having two lows and two highs. And those are the three types. All these tidal types really depend upon uh, the the body of water you're working with. You know, if you've been to the Gulf of Mexico down Florida, they have tides, but they're not as dramatic as, say, maybe in the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, much of these tidal types also depends on the shoreline, what the shoreline looks like. Uh, it also depends on the ocean floor. And those are the characteristics which really uh, influences what type of tidal type you will have. Uh, one interesting area is the Bay of Fundy of Nova Scotia, Nova Scotia, New Brunswick. Uh, it's in the Atlantic Ocean. You know, you have Maine right here. And you can see that this one here, you can see as you go through here, it's, it's very funnel shaped. And what ends up happening as the water rushes in and recedes, you can see it as you get into more of the funnel, it narrows down. And these tides can be upwards of 30 almost to 50 feet as you go in here. And this place, Nova Scotia, uh, the Bay of Fundy has the, uh, the highest tides in the world. And again, a lot of this is due to the shape of this bay here. And you can see it's a, with this funnel shape, it funnels that water right in. It's almost like a, uh, oh, a canyon river that floods. The river's got, the water's got nowhere to go, so it's got to go up. And now uh, you can Google Bay of Fundy, there's all sorts of, uh, videos on the Bay of Fundy showing some time-lapse stuff. If you really want a lot more information about tides, I put a link on here and uh, you can catch up, uh, get into a lot more detail. But if you've got any questions, again, after, you know, after watching the lecture, please write them down in your Cornell notes and we'll take a look at those.